Good morning and welcome to worship. As you can see, we are not in the church today as we are in Tier 4 and because of the increased risk to our health from the new strain of the virus, we decided not to risk the help of the worship team and the streaming team, but to record from home. We will return to the church as soon as we are able to. Meanwhile, you're welcome in our homes and you don't need to book. Last week, we looked back on last year. Today, we look forward to this year as we think of the need for hope. In Jesus, hope became real for all people. In him, we find our hope for today, tomorrow and for eternal life. Following his path leads to the fulfilment of our hope. So let us worship our God and guide in Mission Praise 1346. One more step along the world I go. of it just before I spoke. It's nearly five years old. All of its life it has stayed in a garage, a warm heated garage. And I've never had to go out and scrape it or defrost it or sit in it until it defrosts itself in all that time. Until about three weeks ago that is. You see, I've been getting repairs done to my house. My roof's been fixed. And sometimes when a house needs repairing, people put scaffolding round it, you know, all these poles that the men climb up and get onto the roof with. And that's what my house was like, right round. And I couldn't get into the garage. So before the scaffolding went up, the car had to come out and it had to go and sit at the side of the road. Well, it wasn't very happy, and I wasn't very happy that every time I wanted it, I had to go up the road to get it. The other morning, 
Well, now it must be about two or three weeks ago. It was very, very frosty. Everything was white outside my house. And I thought, oh, am I going to be able to get to the car? Because the road will be all slippery. Well, I managed that. But the car was frozen solid. I was lucky to get into it. And I'm not used to that. The windscreen was absolutely solid. And there was even ice in the inside. However, I got my engine started and I got my heaters on and I got my de-icer spray out and I did the best I could. But I had to sit and wait for quite a while before it was safe to drive it. Now, I'll tell you a secret, not many people know. That day, I didn't get to the church till 5 to 11 and the people who were there were thinking they weren't going to have a minister to take the service. That really worried them. But I got there. Anyway, I was looking forward to the day when the scaffolding would come down and I would get the car back in the garage again. Because I was worried that might happen again and I might not make it by 11 o'clock or wherever else I was going. Well, the scaffolding came down but just nearly a week before Christmas and I went to go into the garage. And the garage door wouldn't open. I don't know what had happened to it, but it wouldn't open. That was a disaster. I could get the car onto the run in, but that wasn't going to stop it freezing up. I phoned the garage door company, but they were on holiday for Christmas. So that didn't help me. I had one more thought. My brother-in-law was coming out on Christmas Eve to bring me Christmas dinner. And I thought maybe he could fix it. So I thought I'll have to wait for him. I was pretty sure he'd be able to fix it. Why do you think I thought he could fix it? What made me quite sure? Well, not 100% sure, but fairly sure if it could be fixed. He could do it. Well, if you said because he was a mechanic or a garage doorman or an engineer, you wouldn't be quite right. But he was a traffic policeman. And traffic policemen are good with cars. And he, I knew, was good with cars. And above that, he had fixed things for me before. Various types of things. When my towel reel fell off, he put it back on. Or when there was something wrong with my lights, he fixed it. He had helped me out several times. And I could be pretty sure he could help me again. So when he came to visit, brought me my dinner, and then out he went to the garage. He was out there quite a while. And then he came and called me out too. So I went out and joined him in the garage. And he showed me this button that helped to work the electric part of my garage because it's one of these doors that goes up and down in its own. And while we were standing there inside the garage, he pressed the part of my car keys that opens and shuts the garage. Well, I tried very hard to trust him at that point as the garage door slowly closed. And we were inside. Anyway, that was all right. It was working, at least to close it. But I was awfully glad when he pressed the button again and the garage door opened. I didn't stay much longer in the garage. Out I went. That was great. Garage door was working again and I was able to get my car back in. And I'm very glad to say that last Sunday, when it was really quite frosty again, I was able to go out and get my car in a lovely warm garage and bring it out all happy with no problems. Trusting God is a bit like that story. Last week I was talking about how it had been a hard year but we had done pretty pretty well despite everything. 
And this year, or this week rather, it is a new year, I'm thinking of looking forward into the year and trusting God. And we have a lot of problems we need sorted out this year, but trusting God to sort them all out for us. And the reason why I can look forward and trust God is that it's his job to help us when we're in trouble. And more importantly for us, he's done it before. He's helped us out time and time again when we have asked him to. And so I can trust that he will be able to fix all the problems that we've got this coming year. Because we know that there will be problems, but he will help us through them. We can be sure of that because he's done it before, because it says in the Bible that he will answer our prayers. We can trust our God. We can pin our hopes on him. Let's pray. Lord, there are lots of things in a muddle in our lives just now. School, church, seeing friends, going to activities. And for older people, there are worries about money and jobs and being ill. We know it's a big ask. But please, sort out the mess. Show us how to make things better and help us to trust that this year will be better because you are good at sorting out our problems. Amen. Let's see one of the videos, action videos we've seen before and I hope you stand up and join in whatever age you are. Our God is a great big God. Our God is a great big God. Our God is a great big God. Our God is a great big God and he holds us in his hand. Our God is a great big God. Our God is a great big God. Our God is a great big God and he holds us in his hand. He's higher than a skyscraper, and he's deeper than a submarine. He's wider than the universe, and beyond my wildest dream. And he saw me, and he loved me, since before the world began. I felt to be a part of God's amazing plan. Our God is a great big God. Our God is a great big God. Our God is a great big God and he holds us in his hand. Our God is a great big God. Our God is a great big God. Our God is a great big God and he holds us in his hand. Higher than a skyscraper and he's deeper than a submarine. He's wider than the universe and beyond my wildest dream. And he knew me and he loved me since before the world began. How wonderful to be a part of God's amazing plan. Our God is a great big God. Our God is a great big God. Our God is a great big God and he holds us in his hands and he holds us in his hands and he holds us in his hands. Let us approach our God in prayer. Let us pray. Everlasting God, you looked at your people struggling in the darkness of the world and you saw their blindness. So you sent a light. You sent a baby. Any baby is a sign of hope, the hopes of its parents and grandparents brought to fruition in a tiny life. But your baby signalled the hope of a nation, the hope the world didn't even know it had. Your baby was and is the hope of salvation, the promised hope of eternal life the certain hope of acceptance in your eyes. 
we thank you for Jesus. But our words are not enough for such a wonderful gift to us. We need to give you our all, ourselves, our lives. Without your divine hope, we would die. Our lives would be pointless. Lord, we fall far short of that idea. We do not give all that we have, all that we are, only a small fraction of ourselves, for we are selfish and self-centred. We give you what does not inconvenience us and hesitate, even turn away when you ask something unexpected of us which disrupts our plans. Yet the hope we have in you deserves all we can give. Help us to trust, to believe more than we do now, that we might be sure in our hope in you. Hear us as we say the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever. Amen. As our service today is concentrating on hope, our spot is a poem exploring the meaning of hope and it's read by Clarinda. Hope. Hope is the look in a dog's eye when it stares at its bowl or its lead. Hope is the desperation in a traveller's run as they rush to catch a train. Hope is the need in a commuter's hand as it turns the car key in the cold. Hope is the emotion in the application for that dream job or just any job. Hope looks forward and believes in the best. Hope is the anticipation in the eyes of a couple as they do their monthly test. Hope is the pleading in a young child's face as she points at the ice cream man. Hope is the tension in a student's face as he waits for life-determining results. Hope is a smile on a teenager's lips as she dresses to please her fancied boy. Hope is uncertainty, but joy anticipated. Hope is in the terror in a wife's mind as she waits to know he is safe. Hope is in a mother's hand as she comforts her ailing child. Hope is in a son's mind as he tries to get home before his dad dies. Hope is in anyone's mind as they go to hear the biopsy results. Hope fights fear and despair and gives strength. Hope was long given for the people of God. Hope was offered by prophets for years. Hope was renewed by every event that favoured the Israelite tribe. Hope was fulfilled when Jesus was born but not in the way of the world. Oh, how they hoped, these early followers of Christ. They hoped for release from suppression. They hoped for supremacy, freedom, a life they thought they deserved and were promised. But God gave them more, far more than they hoped, for freedom they got from their law. But much more than that, they got freedom from sin, and hope of a blessed life eternal. Today, we need hope that this year will be different. We long for a change in our living. We long to have freedom to shop and to travel, to be with our families, hug them and touch. We long to relax, to be safe again, to find the way out of this mess. God grant us the hope that will carry us through that overcomes fear and depression, the hope that brings strength and anticipated joy, 
the hope that is certain, not maybe. God grant us that soon we will pass through this time and find a new era of loving. Thank you, Clarinda, for our poem. Hope is part of so many aspects of our lives, from the trivial to the most important. Let us see what the Bible has to say. We have three short readings today in which hope is important. First one is from Matthew 4, verses 15 and 16. Land of Zebulun and land of Naphtali, the way to the sea along the Jordan, Galilee of the Gentiles. The people living in darkness have seen a great light. On those living in the land of the shadow of death, a light has dawned. From Romans 15 verses 12 and 13, and again Isaiah says, says the, the root of Jesse will spring up one who will arise to rule over the nations. The Gentiles will hope in him. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him, so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. And from Colossians chapter 1, verses 25 to 27. I have become the servant of the church by the commission God gave me to present to you the word of God in its fullness, the mystery that has been kept hidden for ages and generations, but is now disclosed for the saints. To them God has chosen to make known among the Gentiles the glorious riches of this mystery, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. Amen. Let us reflect for a few moments on these verses as Stacy plays for us. Let us pray. <clears throat> May these words lift our hearts and focus our minds on you as we look to the future, our own, our churches, our worlds. Amen. Today, I am not going to give you a sermon, but rather a medley of stories. 
During December, I was following the Advent calendar of Tear Fund. Each day, I received an email with a story, a poem, or an article, or even a sermon written by a member of Tear Fund. All were linked by the theme Hope. And as I wanted to make that my theme for today, it dawned on me that I could use some of their material. Tear Fund do urge people to pass on these stories and these emails to others, and so I'm passing them on to you. Our first story is told by the Reverend Sadhu Mathalali from St Mark's Church in Gillingham. He explains that he was given what he describes as the gift of time, a year's sabbatical to travel and to see how Christians worship in different parts of the world. One of the churches he visited was St Anthony's Church in Colombo, Sri Lanka. On Easter Sunday 2019, their church was bombed while they worshipped. You can imagine the effect of a bomb on a church full of worshipping people, men, women and children. The joy of Easter shattered in a moment as lives were shattered and destroyed. So, what did they do? Was that church closed? Did its members hold little services in people's houses where they Felt safer? Did some turn away from God? They did none of these things. They refused to allow that experience to silence them or alter their faith and hope in Christ. They rebuilt and regrouped. And the Reverend Sadhu found a thriving church shining into its community as a beacon of hope and trust in their God. Their faith was not destroyed, even by such a dreadful happening as that. Their hope gave them the energy to start again and create something even more impressive, for the community knew what they had suffered. In that story, the teller saw the result after all the trauma and recovery had happened. But in the next story, the person was still in the midst of the problems. Ruth Towell is a photographer and filmmaker who uses her camera to tell people's stories. She visits Tear Fund projects all over the world and she found Martha in Nigeria. Three months previously, Martha's village had come under attack, one of 15 to be targeted. In one night, 300 people were killed and 10,000 were made homeless. Martha managed to hide with her six-month-old son, Benjamin, but she saw her husband killed and her two other children. How do you recover from that? When Ruth met Martha, she was living in a makeshift camp along with 3,000 others. They slept shoulder to shoulder on the floor each night. Not the best circumstances in which to recover or rebuild hope and a new life. But Martha radiated joy, which seemed totally irrational. When asked how she could feel this joy, she replied that her hope was in Jesus. When she felt things getting on top of her, she turned to prayer and singing worship songs. She sang for Ruth, who said it was beautiful to see her face fill with peace and joy. The whole camp showed the same kind of hope. They saw the work being done to help them, practically, emotionally and spiritually. They believed that there would be a better future for their children. So their lives 
were filled with hope. Their example in turn reminds Ruth of her own hope in Jesus and it can remind us now too, even when things are hard for us. The third story is quite different. It comes from Elaine Peterson, the director of 24-7 Prayer in Ireland and a pastor in Amaeus Church in Portadown. He remembers at the start of 2020, asking God for inspiration for his church, a word to give his, his people vision for the year ahead. What he got was a reading which puzzled him, Psalm 1, verses 1 to 3. Blessed is the one who does not walk in step with the wicked, or stand in the way that sinners take, or sit in the company of mockers, but whose delight is in the law of the Lord, and who meditates on his law day and night. That person is like a tree planted by streams of water, which yields its fruit in season, and whose leaf does not wither. Whatever they do prospers. Along with this picture of a tree rooted and secure, whatever happened around it, he heard the Lord saying, Be like that tree, son. Stay rooted. Hold your nerve. Draw into my presence. Hold your ground and you will bear fruit. At the time, he couldn't understand how this word was a vision for his church and how they were to use it. But as 2020 unfolded, he realised that it was deeply prophetic. This was how they were to get through the crisis, to hold on to their roots in Christ, the promises on which they depended, the faith and hope which would give them strength and make them stand tall where others were falling. Abby Amatibi, a tear fund worker in the United, K United Kingdom office, recognises that this year sometimes that hope has been lukewarm, has been questioned and almost failed. But she says that's okay. It was bound to happen. And that is why God sent Jesus to give us hope that we might see a light in the darkness. I want to finish with the poem which encouraged one of the other contributors. Here it is. Even though some nights seem anything but holy, even though Christmas isn't always merry and can leave us feeling lonely. Even though we sometimes fail no matter how hard we try. Even though we seem stuck on the ground when we are desperate to fly. Even though our faded dreams shake our belief. Even though life can feel agonisingly brief. Even though we lose the people that we love and we question whether there's even a God above, even though we take the risk and give ourselves away. But then our hearts break, and our hearts break, and our hearts break. And we cry to God, how long will it take before this dark night will end, before the sun rises and the world begins to mend. Even though from here to redemption couldn't seem more far, still I've heard a rumour of a strange star shining with an unfamiliar light, burning with the hope that maybe these wrongs will be put right. What do you see when you look into your sky? Darkness, confusion, storm clouds thundering the question, why? Why me? Why now? Why does it have to be this hard? Why him? Why her? Do I always have to end up scarred? Look closer. 
even though it may seem faint, still you will see a star beckoning you to follow, promising that though it hurts tonight, something new will be born tomorrow. Something new will be born. Something new will be born. Everything that's been broken, shattered and torn will be healed. Hearts will be mended and love's true face revealed. So even though you've fallen, know that you will be restored. For there, there is a star in your sky pointing towards a saviour, guiding you to the Lord. May you always see your star in the sky through this new year. Amen. Let us listen to two verses from a well-known hymn, CH4153, Great is Thy Faithfulness. our prayers as we bring them to you in great adoration. Lord, help us to hear you saying, I am your hope over all other voices. Your word says you are the hope for hopeless. Fill us up with hope and give us a tangible reminder today that hope is an unbreakable spiritual lifeline. God, you know these things in our hearts that we barely dare to hope for. Today we give them to you, and we entrust them to you. Let us pray for an end to this pandemic. For those infected and those exposed, we pray that they will be strengthened, healed and protected. For their loved ones, we pray for peace, comfort and endurance as they care for them. For healthcare professionals and frontline workers, we pray that they will be granted wisdom and resources and protection in their line of work. 
We pray that you, Lord, will grant doctors, nurses and caregivers understanding and compassion in treating their patients and protection from burnout and to give them strength in times of tiredness and calm them in times of anxiety. For those who have become unemployed and underemployed during this pandemic, grant them comfort, wisdom and financial provision as they strive to make ends meet. We pray that they will be resourceful and creative and endure the difficult times. Grant them humility to persevere despite the overwhelming odds. Lord, direct each one of us in ways of generosity and compassion that through our love and concern for one another, our whole society would be given strength to endure these present challenges and to work towards a shared future with hope. We pray for those who are in the offices that govern this community and country and that they make wise and godly decisions which are always in the best interests of the community. Grant leaders in their capacity as political, social and spiritual heads discernment and creativity to lead and minister in these unprecedented circumstances and as we move towards a time of uncertainty after Brexit Help all parties to work together to do what's best for everyone. 2020 was a year of uncertainty, despair, gloom and doom. Let us look forward to 2021 with renewed hope, joy, love and prosperity. For hope and faith are our hallmarks for our continued existence. Help us to lean on you. Help us to trust in you. Help us to hold on to our faith in you. In Jesus' name we pray, for you are our hope and we trust you. Amen. Now let's sing our closing hymn. CH4 237 Look Forward in Faith. this new year, buoyed by trust and faith in the Lord, that he will guide you through it and enable you to cope with it, and with the hope that this will be a better year, and the blessing of Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. <laughs>
that gives me strength for every passing day. A glimpse of glory now revealed in the heart, yet drives all doubt away. I stand in Christ with sins forgiven, and Christ in See the